This episode of We Need to Talk is brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. You can get 20% off all Manscaped products and free shipping using the code Football Daily. That's all one word, Football Daily at Manscaped.com. Go and support the channel, please. Anyway, this is the show that looks at football on the internet over the past seven days. The seven days that seen Luis Suarez's son beat him at FIFA. <laughs> Stevie G hitting back at questions about Alfredo Morelos. Do you think it's maybe unfair as well on Alfredo Morelos who might be getting a reputation unfairly for that? Don't worry about Alfredo, he's just scored the winner. He's dancing around there with no top on to Sweet Caroline, he's fine. And Gary Neville. Same as me, really, Gary. Not happy about Man United. It wasn't a good night for United. You can't have too many performances like that. Uh, I've always said in the past when maybe Lou van Gaal was the manager or uh, Jose Mourinho was the manager, you can win, you can lose, you can draw, but you can't be boring. And that was boring tonight watching that. Anyway, today we need to talk about England. All right, yesterday I put out a tweet asking for your help to come up with an idea for a We Need To Talk tier list. And shout out this week is going to Divyanshu Ranjan. I've tried my best. I might just call you Divi. Divi? That doesn't sound great, does it? Now, Divi said top 20 English forwards, brackets, strikers and wingers, and their chances to go to the Euro. So today I'm doing that tier list. I'm doing England's forwards, so strikers, wingers, and I've also included attacking midfielders in the short list. And I've come up with five categories. Nailed on, self-explanatory, very likely an injury call up, which means if one of the top two tiers drops out because of a major injury, they would get called up unlikely and no chance. Now I've selected the 20 most sort of talked about names online. I might have missed out a couple and I've had a look at England's 23 man squads in the past and generally it's comprised of six forwards, so strikers, wingers and three attacking midfielders. So we're looking for about nine names from this 20 man shortlist. So I want you guys at home to comment your nine names in the comments right now. I'm going to be replying to some of them in the first sort of couple of hours. And let's try and get this video to 5,000 likes. 5,000 likes and England are going to win the Euros. So, you know, it's all on you, really. Seriously. Okay, kicking us off in alphabetical order, we've got Bamford. Patrick Bamford. Now, he has scored lots of goals. 18 goal involvements in 26 games is some going. I'm pretty sure I put him in, I don't want to say I pookie jinxed him at the start of the season, but I remember saying something about Patrick Bamford not getting 10 goal involvements. And he's proved me wrong, unsurprisingly, because I'm clueless, but no senior caps. I don't think he's in Gareth Southgate's thoughts. I'm gonna put Bamford in the no chance category. Barkley's up next, and a little bit like Bamford, He's actually had an okay season. Like, pre the injury, he was really, really playing well. I don't think he's going to go either, though. Not been part of the most recent squads. There's better attacking midfielders than him. I'm going to put Barkley in no chance, too. Harvey Barnes is up next. And I just think, oh, I'm gutted for him. I think that injury has absolutely killed him. The knee surgery, I think he's going to be out for about eight weeks. A horrible time for Leicester and his development because he got 17 goal involvements this season. He was absolutely flying. And I think he might have been on the injury call-up tier had he not picked that up. But because he's got injured, I'm going unlikely. Calvert-Lewin, then I think he's extremely highly thought of by Gareth Southgate. Obviously, in the last couple of squads, I think he scored a couple of times for England in those games as well. 20 goals in 32 games. He just offers something a little bit different as well. He offers that sort of central figure where if we're struggling and Kane isn't getting involved in the play, we can go a little bit more direct. We can whip balls in from those fullbacks. And Shaw and Trent Alexander-Arnold have been excellent so far this season at doing just that. So I think he's not quite nailed on. He's like 1.5 Calvert-Lewin. I think he's very likely to go. Phil Foden is up next then. And him, Grealish, Mount and Madison, probably competing for three spaces, I believe. And Foden, for me, has to go. 
I think, 18 goal involvements in 36 games. So that doesn't really tell the full story. He is so good on the ball. His movement's really improved. His pressing's really improved this season under Pep Guardiola. I believe he's got over that sort of Iceland incident. Obviously, the one with him and Mason Greenwood. Better than Greenwood. He was in the last squad. I'm going very likely Phil Foden goes. Grealish is up next then. And he is the best creator in the Premier League. He just is. Look at the numbers from open play. He is a bit of a worry because of the shin splints. They've been kicking up a fuss recently, haven't they? And he's had problems with those in the past. And he's also a bit of a conundrum for Gareth Southgate. He's a bit of a maverick, and I love it. I love Jack Grealish. Has to be on the plane for me. 19 goal involvements in 26 games. Whether it's as a winger or as an attacking midfielder, I don't care. He's got to go very likely. Greenwood is up next then. I just can't see it. I think the forward line is too strong. He's definitely going to be one for the future. An amazing talent, but maybe not had the progressive season and hit the heights he thought he would this year. And Manchester United fans potentially thought he would. He's going to be an England regular in the future, guaranteed. But I think it's unlikely he's on the plane. A bit like Mason Greenwood, Callum hudson Adoy. I think is unlikely as well. Four goal involvements in only eight Premier League starts. I couldn't believe that when I read it. And now Tuchel's come in. He's kind of playing as a wing back. And I, the England fullback, especially on the right situation, is just jacked. It's like our deepest position, right back. Um, I don't think he'll go as a wing back. I don't think he'll go as a forward. Sorry, I'm going to have to put Hudson Odoi alongside Greenwood in unlikely. Ings is up next then. Oh, what's happened to Danny Ings recently? He's coincided perfectly with Southampton's dip, hasn't he? Three goals since the start of December. Not good enough. Southampton are obviously struggling, and it's such a shame for Danny Ings because if the Euros had gone ahead last season, he would have definitely been on the plane, wouldn't he? He'd would have been a nailed on potentially in this tier list, or at least very likely. I feel like I want to be kind to him and say injury call up. He's probably. Third or fourth choice striker. Is he, though? Uh, I'm going to put Ings in injury call-up just to be kind. But he's fortunate not to be in unlikely. All right, Kane's up next. Yeah, nailed on. I mean, is there even any point discussing this one? He's obviously our best striker by a mile. Uh, probably in the top two strikers in world football. Yeah, I'll just stick him in nailed on. Don't even need a discussion, does it? Lingard is up next there. And I've thrown this one into the hat just because I want to say <laughs> to everybody who mocked me when I said that signing would be a good one on a tier list a few weeks ago for West Ham. He's not going to go, though. He's in the no chance category, isn't he? I'll stick him in there now. We're just too stacked in that area. James Madison up next. I think he will be the one to miss out of the four I spoke about earlier, to be honest with you. He has got 13 goal involvements in 18 Premier League starts, but he has got that sort of recurrent hit problem. And I'm just not sure Southgate loves him. I think Mason Mount, because he can play a little bit deeper, is more likely to be on the plane. And I think Grealish has had a better season. And I think Foden is just like a totally different caliber of prospect and it's really important he gets international minutes at major tournaments so i'm sadly gonna put madison into the injury call-up list you know if Grealish doesn't recover from the shin splints then he's definitely gonna go mount i think will definitely be on the plane because southgate loves him and you know what rightly so he's been chelsea's best player this season every time i watch him he's the best player on the pitch he can play deeper in a two as well maybe alongside henderson or, or maybe alongside his best mate Declan Rice. I love Mason Mount. I won't have any of the disrespect you're about to give him in the comments below. Just delete that tweet now. Delete that comment now because Mason Mount is a fabulous footballer. I'm putting him in nailed on. Rashford then obviously been amazing for United this season. Some of the disrespect people showed towards Marcus Rashford is frightening online. His numbers are just incredible. I think there's only two under 23s in Europe with 10 goals and 10 assists or more so far this season, and that's Jadon Sancho and Marcus Rashford. Like, put some respect on his name. I think if you look at the numbers, and I'm not comparing him to Haaland and Mbappe, but I think he's the third in the under-23 goal contributions list so far this season. I think it goes Haaland, 30-odd, 30 34 maybe, Mbappe, 30, Rashford, 29. Like, put some respect on his name, please. 
Next up then, we've got a controversial one, Saka. Now, I think it's more likely, bear with me here, that Bukayo Saka goes as left back cover. I think that's extremely likely. I don't know whether he would be included in this group of nine, but he has to be on the plane for me. He's been Arsenal's best player, a bit like Foden, really important that he gets minutes at major tournaments for me. I think he will go in the left back slot though, so I'll put him in very likely. I don't think he'll be one of the nine, but he's going to go as a left back, even though he will play right wing. If you get what I'm saying, hope that makes sense. Jaden Sancho's up next then. Yeah, I mean, refound his form incredibly of late, isn't he? I think it's 11 goal involvements in his last 10 games. He's absolutely flying with Dortmund. And I just said uh, that him and Marcus Rashford are the only two under 23s in Europe with over 10 goals and 10 assists so far this season. Yeah, he's nailed on, I think, Sancho. Probably a starter for me. I think I would go Sancho, Kane, Sterling. And then Rashford is an impact off the bench. Um, brilliant, brilliant player. Sterling's up next then. I just spoke about him. He's obviously going to go into my nailed on category. 21 goal involvement so far this season. Doesn't really tell the story though of how vital he is to that Man City team. He's almost playing as a striker at times. Fabulous movement off the ball. Brilliant footballer. Uh, again, like I said, a starter in this team. So nailed on. Tammy Abraham. This is a tough one because I feel like it's between Tammy and Danny Ings for that third choice strikers box. I think it's gonna be Kane and Dominic Calvalu in one and two. And my worry for both Tammy and Danny Ings would probably be that Gareth Southgate goes, I can afford to just take those two. I could afford to just take Kane, calvert -Lewin, because Rashford can play through the middle as well. Therefore, I don't need the third striker and I can take an extra attacking mid or winger. Might mean he's allowed to take Madison as well. So do you take Madison over Tammy and Ings Probably. I know that Tammy is Chelsea's top goal scorer this season and on paper is more likely to go. So I'll put him in the very likely category, but I can easily see him dropping out and Madders pushing up one. Those two rotating or rings and him rotating. Ollie Watkins up next then. I don't think he's been involved in a squad yet, so I would be extremely surprised to see him on the plane. I think he might be one for the future, but he's not as old as some of the younger players that are breaking through into that position. You know, he's older than Dominic Calvert-Lewin, older than Marcus Rashford, older than Tammy Abraham. Um, so he, he might prove me wrong, but I would be surprised to see Ollie Watkins get loads of minutes for England. I'm going to put him in the uh, no chance or unlikely I'll be kind of putting him unlikely. Final one then, Callum Wilson with the injury. Yeah, it's just not happening. It's just not going to happen. He's probably fifth or sixth choice striker now. No chance for me. Firmly in the no chance category. All right, so that was my tier list of England's forwards and attacking midfielders going into the Euros. As I said at the start, let me know your nine names in the comments below. Also, hit that like button. 5,000 likes in England are winning the Euros. It's coming home. It's, all, it's being played in Wembley, so it'll already be home. Uh, nevertheless, as I said at the start as well, make sure you go over to manscaped.com and use the code FOOTBALLDAILY. That's 20% off all of their products and free shipping, and you're supporting the channel. Whilst you do it, it's well worth it. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye.